I scaled my SMA to $75,000 a month. Here are some of the tools that I used and currently still also use to do that. So the first one is the free sentiment analyzer on danielsoper.com. Uh, no idea who Daniel Soper is, but he has a sentiment analyzer and it's free. If you don't know what a sentiment analyzer is, what it does is it pretty much gives you a sentiment score on text that you put into it. One thing that you may not know is that when you're advertising on ad platforms, some of these algorithms bias have a bias towards more positive messages because they make users feel better, which keeps users on the platform more, so on and so forth. So what you can do is when you write an ad, you can paste it in here and it will give you a score from negative 100 all the way up to positive 100. And then from there, pretty much if it's greater than zero, it's more positive than negative, your ad copy. If it's less than zero, it's more negative than positive. Don't, uh, you'd rather run an ad that has a 100 sentiment, sentiment score than a negative 100 sentiment score. And you'd rather run an ad that has a 100 cent, sentiment score instead of a zero sentiment score. So this text that they give us here has a sentiment score of 94.1, for example. So this is what you can do and you can actually understand what bits of text, what words, etc., have negative sentiment overall in general that drag the rest of your ad copy down in terms of sentiment score. And then you can adjust those words, change them, change your message, so on and so forth. Now, some people will advertise based on fear. Sure, that's a thing as well, but I like to use this sometimes just to see are my messages more positive? Are they more negative? And kind of just communicate in a more positive light in general because this just helps with subconscious activations kind of in general. So I don't use this anymore to be fair, but I did use it warmupinbox.com. So it ends up being pretty cheap. It's okay, well, they've raised the prices. It used to be nine bucks per inbox. And basically what it does is it helps you passively automatically warm up new email accounts, whether they're Gmails or uh, Google Workspace accounts, whatever it is that you use. I don't know if you can do Gmail actually anymore. So don't quote me on that, but you can warm up emails here. It'll send 50 warm up emails a day. They'll auto reply. They'll use your email account to auto reply, or the, I don't know if they use yours or your own, but they auto reply to the emails that your accounts are automatically sending out so that you get a certain response rate and so that your email sender reputation within Google Workspace or Gmail, for example, increases and your odds of hitting inbox increase. Now also, when your emails go to the promotions tab in Gmail, whatever the other tab is in the spam folder, they'll pull them out and move them to the inbox, which also helps your score. And they give you charts that you can look at. Let me see if I can find any here. But they give you charts that you can look at as well, uh, just in order to see how your emails are performing. Here's an example of a chart right here. So you can see your spam rate, your category, whatever right? Um, your, all these, all these stats, all this information. So uh, that helps. You can do it passively. If you have 10 emails, you're warming up, it'll cost you 120 bucks a month. And usually within a couple months, you'll have an email or a set of emails that are fully primed and ready to start sending cold emails without just like instantly hitting spam and having a bunch of problems. Their support's also really good and really knowledgeable. I don't know if they've changed it, but one thing I really liked was that I asked their support some pretty intricate technical questions. And it seemed like the people who were running the company or at least very knowledgeable, knowledgeable people who are higher up in the company were the ones answering the questions. So that was something I really liked too. Now this next one is this silly little grammar checker, grammarcheck.net slash editor. And you can just paste your ads into here if you're doing written ads and just test your grammar. Uh, I prefer to use inf informal language in general in my advertising, but if you're running ads for clients, a lot of clients will be, oh, that's not proper grammar, whatever. So you can run it through this every time before sending stuff out, which makes you look more professional. It makes them look more professional. Everybody's happier, generally speaking. So quick little tool that you can use. Another cool thing that you can do is use this title capitalization tool. So capitalizemytitle.com. And let's say I'm writing you know, the title for this YouTube video, eight, tool, eight tools I use in my agency. I, if I type that in all lowercase, it automatically corrects it. And then you can just copy this and then go paste it wherever you need to paste it into your ad headlines or whatever. So that way, again, similar to the grammar, you're getting correct title capitalization because people who know better and know what correct title capitalization looks like are gonna think you're an idiot or the person you're running ads for is an idiot if you can't even capitalize titles correctly. How's this person supposed to, you know, I don't know, provide me with some type of professional services properly. And that's not necessarily true, but it can happen. So it's more of a safe than sorry thing and a professionalism thing. 
This next one's actually pretty cool. So if you find text, maybe it's in a PDF or maybe not in a PDF, but it's in some kind of document where, or it's an image on a website or something where you want to get the text to copy and paste for some reason or another. Maybe one of your clients has some like PNG image that explains everything that they do. What you can do is right click, save that image as, make sure it's some kind of like PNG or JPEG. I don't know if this does WebP, but I don't know, you'll have to test it out. You can drag it into here and hit submit and it will just spit out all the text within that. So you can just copy and paste it and put it into like a features benefits part of their website that you're building for them, for example, or on a landing page or the, some somewhere in a funnel within an ad, whatever it is. So then it's more easy to copy and paste instead of having to like type out every single little thing listed in an image. So the next one's kind of hilarious, kind of stupid, so I'll make it quick, but Word counting, very important for making sure that your ads are clean and clear and concise, not too lengthy, not too wordy. Also, when it comes to like writing headlines, for example, you there there are certain like character counts you want to maintain. So you can do it in Google Docs, you can, or like Microsoft Word has it too, just control shift C on Windows, it'll give you the amount of words, the amount of characters, characters excluding spaces as well. Alternatively, you can use wordcounter.net, simple little thing, on to the next. Now, when it comes to using images for your clients, stock images, um, I use a series of different websites. Most are free, one of them is paid, but these websites are as follows. Number one, pexels.com. Number two, unsplash.com. Number three is pixabay.com. All three of these are free. And then number four is shutterstock.com, which is paid. Now, you do need to be very careful. Make sure you're looking at all the licenses and everything within these websites to see what you're allowed to use. Or, you know, for example, like Shutterstock has some photos are editorial use only, so you're not allowed to use them in advertisements. Other images that you are allowed to use in advertisements, they have different licensing plans. So for cheaper, you can have it where you can only use an image for up to, I think, 10,000 impressions of an ad, which is not very much. So then if that image performs well, you can pay for the full license and use it across unlimited client accounts, so on and so forth. So that can be a way that you can test images, but it does cost money. So um, just make sure you check all the licensing for all these websites. I am not responsible for any stupid image copyright problems that you have, but either way, these websites are great. Now, one other thing I really like using is Zapier because it really helps automate your business. And I've completely automated my business in part with Zapier. So I made a video on Zapier. You can check that out on screen now. Go watch it, see you there.